Good morning, Internet. It is Friday. Actually, it's evening here, but morning for you. First off, the management would like to apologize for any sniffles or coughs that will be going on throughout this episode. We are currently experiencing the disorientation of several climates at once. This is a side effect of having recently moved to the highlands of Madagascar. No, really, I'm serious. I'm in Madagascar. How the hell did I get here? Madagascar. No, not that one. Or, or that one. No, not that one either. Ah, uh, much better. First off, the trip here. I've flown a lot. Like, I've, I've grown up moving a lot. We've always gone on trips. Um, but my itinerary had me leaving SFO on a Sunday and reaching my destination on a Tuesday, which I did not do, incidentally. I arrived on a Thursday. The trip involved four continents, luxurious airlines, little airline-themed slippers, and, I mean, little, I don't have small feet at all. Eight hours in Istanbul, straddling the divide between Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. And unfortunately, seductively delicious Turkish cafe food that gave me such severe food poisoning that I passed out in the plane while vomiting somewhere high over Somalia and not regaining anything close to real consciousness until I woke up on a gurney in the saffron cement hallway of an Indian Ocean emergency room with no real concept of what country I was in, if the university knew where I was, uh, whether I was there legally, how many days had passed, if I had all my internal organs, whether I'd somehow gotten to Madagascar. Spoiler alert, I hadn't. I hadn't gotten to Madagascar. I mean, my organs were fine, if unhappy and in ejection mode. I'd woken up in the Jawaharlal Nehru, I'm probably saying that completely wrong, hospital on Mauritius, a tiny island nation about 1132 kilos east of my intended destination. I managed to get a hold of my dad, who tenaciously and lovingly badgered the calling organization until they found me, upside of working for a religiously affiliated university. Clergy can definitely get into hospitals. Two days of controlled food deprivation, intravenous fun, and hearing Bollywood soap operas down the hallway later, I escaped as a fugitive from both medicine and propriety, and, um fled the beautiful, beautiful Creole Caribbean island in the Indian Ocean without American tourists to land in Antananarivo in the middle of the night, finally in Madagascar. I'm working for the Universite Aventiste Zürcher in Sambayn, which is about an hour by taxi proofs north of Ansarabe, which is Mada's third largest city. I'm teaching nursing English, auditory skills, and advanced media writing this year as well as running the language lab and working on some academic research that I actually get to faculty publish, so I'm super excited about that. If I can pick one topic out of the bazillion buzzing in my brain, it turns out there's a lot in the subcontinent to talk about. That's right, I said it. Subcontinent. So it turns out that we have a ridiculously wrong idea of what the world looks like in the West because we use the Mercator projection of maps, one of the many methods of trying to squish our orange peel earth into something with a few less lumps. Good old Mercator's great for sailing east and west in straight lines, but not so great at relative size. Greenland is not as big as Africa, and Madagascar is roughly the size of California, Oregon, and a good chunk of Washington combined. Yeah, that's what I thought. The Invisibility shrinking cloak of map distortion has been disguising an entire subcontinent as a shrimp hanging out behind Africa this entire time. It's big enough that it could even support like 18 separate cultures instead of the one Madagascari 
people one, you know? It does what? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm joking, but that really kind of was my reaction, as was a lot of academic papers in the 1930s. Now, might I remind you, France had been administering the place since they'd invaded in 1887, after the London Missionary Society and Britain in general, who'd shown up about 1820, not counting pirates, had recognized their claim in exchange for the French recognizing their claim to Zanzibar. 110 years later, and nobody asked, hey, so is everybody here part of the same group, or language, or... To be fair, academia hasn't really been helpful. The nationally dominant Marin group considers its Tenegasi Marin to be the standard, with the other languages of the other groups to be dialects of their master tongue, regardless of whether they're mutually intelligible, which they're usually not, especially the further that you get away from the Central Highlands. Perhaps Mac Wienreich was right when he said that a language is a dialect with an army and a navy. Washing up on what is essentially an alien planet brings with it no easy questions. 18 separate cultures, something like 80% of all biological species here being found only here, and a vastly different way of life means that you're not only outside of your comfort zone, you are now simultaneously wealthy and really stupid. I'm serious. There are 3,194 ariyat to the US dollar, last I checked, and 200 of them buy a rather exorbitantly priced mango. You become a multimillionaire by stepping off of a plane onto the tarmac. Uh, you can step on the tarmac, but the TSA has machine guns, so it's a bit of a nostalgia wash. Um, and little of your proud, relevant skills haven't been replaced entirely by different, much more relevant skills that you are not actually skilled at. Among these include crafting makeshift candle holders for the sudden onset of the monsoon season power outages, the subtle physics of utilizing toilets that have a BYOTP policy, getting your bush knife repaired at the blacksmith shop in the alleyway behind the Tsin Atsubutsu. I'm really excited to be experiencing, in like, the romantic sense, the opposite edge of the world from my own. It's pretty hard to get further away from the Bay Area without standing on the deck of a ship or a space station. And even though I come from a very culturally diverse community, being submerged in the campus culture of a university that speaks four to five different languages just during a cafeteria meal is a jump even for me. and. I've grown up jumping. I guess with this vlog, I want to show some of the things about what Madagascar is like to a planet that doesn't know all that much about it. It's an amazing place, its people are noble, their cultures are fascinating, vibrant, and have a deep dignity to themselves. And a lot of my former customers in California thought that this was merely the fictional setting of a lion cartoon. I also want to talk about the world and the things in it, experiences, ideas, and recording memories. If you're watching this, thank you. Thank you for joining the conversation. Uh, please subscribe, and I will try to make videos as consistently as possible, internet access and class schedule permitting. After all, I am a professor, and that comes with classes and students. I want to shout out to the Vlogbrothers and Mike from Idea Channel for inspiring me to do a blog, or vlog, ta -da. and to AFC Wimbledon for that score the other night, DFTBA. Uh, I miss my family, I love them a lot, and you should totally look at some of the artwork that my co-pilot Jade posts. Visceral, beautiful, uh, amazing, and the art's pretty great too. Link in the do with you. Um, I think that's it for now. Faluma. Um.
see you next time. <laughs> You're heavy. <laughs> <laughs>